process of creating a CMOS device begins with a clean P-type silicon wafer. A layer of the P-type epitaxial silicon is deposited on the surface of the wafer using a chemical vapor deposition CVD process. The epitaxial layer provides a more precisely doped silicon layer and helps solve operating problems inherent with the CMOS devices. The devices will be formed in and on the epitaxial layer. The wafer is then placed in a high heat oxidation furnace where oxygen combines with the silicon and forms a layer of silicon dioxide. Next comes the first pattering process. Pattering begins with the application of a photoresist that is applied while the wafer is spinning to produce a thin layer. Some of the resist solvents are driven off by a low temperature soft bake over a hot plate. After the soft bake, the resist is exposed with ultraviolet light using a photolithography stepper machine. The resist is exposed through a patterned mask transferring the pattern into the resist by altering its properties where it is exposed. Exposure is followed by chemical development to remove exposed portions of the resist. Following a hard bake and to further drive solvent out of the resist and promote adhesion, a dry or wet etch is conducted to remove silicon dioxide in areas where the resist was removed. The remaining resist is removed and the wafer is thoroughly cleaned. N-type dopant atoms such as phosphorus, arsenic, or antimony are implanted using an ion implanter through the openings in the silicone dioxide into the epitaxial layer creating N-wells. These N-wells will provide space to later implant P-type dopants to form the source and drain of the PMOS devices. The next step is a heat treatment called annealing. Annealing is necessary to repair crystal damage caused by the implant process and to electrically activate the implanted atoms. Another thin layer of silicon dioxide called the gate oxide is grown over the end well regions. The oxide is actually grown over the entire wafer but grows much faster over the wells. Using a CVD process, a layer of polysilicon is deposited over the gate oxide. The polysilicon will form the device gates. Another pattering process is now accomplished beginning with the application of a layer of resist followed by a soft bake. The second mask is used to expose the resist to form the device gates in the polysilicon. The exposed resist is developed removing the unwanted areas of resist followed by a hard bake. A dry or wet etch is accomplished removing the unwanted areas of polysilicon down to the gate oxide. The remaining resist is removed and the wafer cleaned. Another pattering process is accomplished beginning with the application of photoresist and a soft bake. Mask 3 is used to expose and define areas in the resist that will identify the drain and source areas for the PMOS devices. The exposed area is developed removing the unwanted areas of resist followed by a hard bake. An ion implanter is used to implant P-type boron atoms through the open areas of the resist into the end wells forming the drain and source for the PMOS devices. The ions are implanted through a thin layer of gate oxide. The remaining resist is removed and the wafer cleaned. Another pattering process is accomplished beginning with the application of photoresist and a soft bake. Mask 4 is used to expose and define areas in the resist that will identify the drain and source areas for the NMOS devices. The exposed area is developed removing the unwanted areas of resist followed by a hard bake. An ion implanter is used to implant N-type phosphorus, arsenic, or antimony atoms through the open areas of resist into the P-type epitaxial layer forming the drain and source for the NMOS devices. The ions are implanted through a thin layer of gate oxide. The remaining resist is removed and the wafer cleaned. 
A thick layer of silicon dioxide is grown on the wafer surface covering the polysilicon gates. Another patterning process is used to define areas where electrical connections will be made to the drains, sources, and gates. A layer of photoresist is applied to the surface of the wafer and a soft bake completed. Mask 5 is used to expose the resist defining the source, drain, and gate areas of the devices. The resist is developed removing the unwanted areas of resist followed by a hard bake. An etch is completed, removing silicon dioxide through the open areas of resist until reaching the drain, source, and gate areas of the devices. The remaining resist is removed and the wafer cleaned. Next comes the deposition of tungsten to fill the contact holes, followed by a dry etch to remove the excess tungsten. Next, a layer of conducted metal is sputtered onto the surface of the wafer. A pattering process is now used to define the exact electrical connection paths required by circuit design. A layer of photoresist is applied to the surface of the wafer and a soft bake completed. Mask 6 is used to expose the resist defining the electrical connection path. The resist is developed removing the unwanted areas of resist followed by a hard bake. An etch is completed removing the unwanted areas of conductive metal. The remaining resist is removed and the wafer cleaned. Next, a passivation layer of nitride is deposited on the wafer surface. This layer provides protection from the components on the wafer surface during testing, packaging, and use. A last pattering process is accomplished to provide openings for electrical connections to the chip. A layer of photoresist is applied to the surface of the wafer and a soft bake completed. Mask 7 is used to expose the resist defining the openings in the nitride. The resist is developed removing the unwanted areas of resist followed by a hard bake. An etch is completed removing the unwanted areas of nitride. The remaining resist is removed and the wafer cleaned. This completes the fabrication of the CMOS device.